one thing where I know we're not supposed to compare the men's game and the women's game, I did get the sense that, I, look, I, I, I drop in on the women's game for, 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 for big events. I'm by no means an expert. But I kind of felt that there was a bit of an arc in the women's game. So there were moments going back 15 years ago when the women's game, when it was more physical and less technical, there were some dirty, you would see some dirty situations going on, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, you know, the, I remember there's a Colombian player punching Abby Wambach, for example. I remember Abby Wambach broke it, breaking the, the England captain's nose. Like, there was an, there was an, there was an yeah. edge, there was a nastiness to it, right? Then it went away. I think the game actually became probably better coached, more, more, more technically gifted players. But what we saw on the penalty with Lucy Bronze, yeah. this was some old school, you know, spit housery, as some people <laughs> like to call it. Where she was really to get into Jenny's head, or I think she was just arguing about the ball not being on the penalty okay, spot. Why probably. would you ever do that? I don't know. Why? Well, like, why? You, you do it for one reason. And it went on and on, and she's arguing with the players to the point that several of Jenny's uh, yeah, teammates yeah, yeah, came yeah, up yeah, and said, over. please get out of here, right? Yeah. Was this the frustration that was maybe in her head I from the mistake so. she made earlier? Whatever. Uh, I'm surprised the referee didn't book her because. That, that, yeah, that, that's straight. We, we see this in the men's game a, a lot of the times. And, you know, we say, oh, it's part of the game. But maybe it is part of the game. Maybe it is a competitive edge. And yeah, if you yeah, get yeah. into an opponent's head, you know, you'll do it, right? I just wonder, I mean, if Jenny scores that pen in the 72nd, it was, or 70th minute, whatever, the game is over. And I think the frustration from the England players, and you saw Kira Walsh with the handball, she knew straight away right. she handed it, uh, handled the ball that it was going to be given after VR, and I think maybe just that frustration and the tension like got to Lucy Bronze and she was just arguing, or maybe she was just trying to get into Jenny's head, and I guess it worked because Mary Herb served the pen and England was still in the game for another twenty minutes, but but. Mary Herbst's yeah. reaction rather uh, some industrial language yeah, after saving the penalty. Personality, whether you you know some will like it, some won't like it. The swearing, the you know, uh, putting the tongue out, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and she was very good in that final. But I just think, for what was an amazing World Cup, really, I I, I thought so. Uh, to cover or to was watch, it better than France 2019 though, right? I think it was. I it think wasn't it was. the food better, the scenery better? Oh, okay, in France? no, okay. you mean like no. that? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, it was a, it was. Those is French, in case you haven't noticed. Yeah, in case you haven't noticed, it, it was a. It was a final that I think, in a way, it could have been better, of course, more goals, etc., whatever you want. But it did justice to how good the whole tournament yeah. was because there was drama, there was tension, there was some moment of really good football, there were chances, you mentioned, hit the post, hit the bar, blah, 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 great saves all around. And I thought, just to cap off what was a really good tournament, the first one with 32 countries, where we were not really sure, are they ready no. to make it to 32? No. It was great. So well done to Spain and England. In the end, of course, Spain the happier. But yeah, that was a really big statement. Um, I think uh, the the football on the pitch, the spectacle was really good. Obviously, mm. there's concerns because it's in Australia. The time difference makes it inconvenient for many other parts of the world. But we saw that people did tune in, people did watch, people did come back. Yeah. Um, I was quite moved by uh, the, so these quotes from uh, uh, Sarai Barman, who's the head of the. FIFA uh, women's um, division, and she, she's from New Zealand, and she was talking about how um, when New Zealand scored the first ever ever goal yeah. in the first game, she says, you know, she has thirteen ne nephews, you know, all men, and how they're all cheering wildly and hugging wildly when uh, w w when they scored, and they said like they didn't see a woman athlete, they just saw an athlete, they just saw the moment, yeah. right? And that, I think, is something special. I think the question of what is a legacy, what is it going to be like going forward, um, is obviously a very complex one. I go back to this. I don't know to what degree. I, I don't know who's the one driving it, right? Because FIFA's job is not to have the most financially successful World Cup. FIFA's job is to ensure that the game develops around the world. Yeah. Right. That, that is ultimately their mission statement. That's what we need to, to, to hold them to account to, right? Let's provide enough women access to the game so that people, people can play the game. Um, and then other people look at it in purely commercial terms, right? Let's have a pro league. Let's get more sponsors involved. Yeah, Let's, yeah. 
it's a balancing act. You need both the private and you need the public FIFA, for lack of a better word, the, the, the public sector here. But um, I think it's right that people go and, and, you know, proponents, people who like women's football, push their own FAs, especially the wealthier countries, to pick up the slack. And I'll be really curious to see what happens, for example, here in England. Um, you know, the women's, the women's league doesn't start until October. Yeah. You know, they have, they play fewer games. They play, what, like 24-odd yeah, yeah, games yeah, like that, right? Yeah, 22, yeah. Um, is it because it's not financially viable playing more games? In the U.S., they just started another, another professional league, yeah. right? So there's two professional leagues now, right? How viable are they? Mm. And does it matter that professional game is viable or should the model be like we have in, in rugby, like we have in cricket, where you have a certain number of professional players on central contracts and maybe you have a wider base. Maybe you've got more women who are able to play because it's semi-professional, yeah, because yeah. it's more regional, you know, while still preserving the elite. I think there's a lot of things to think about. And I think, I hope people take this seriously, see the potential in it and, and continue to build it that way. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's potential for really good legacy and, and to keep the improvement. I think FIFA and Gianni Infantino also need to show that they care and Gianni Infantino not being at the World Cup the whole time. I'm not saying go to every single game like he did in Qatar because it was not logistically possible. Bigger, yeah. But still, he was absent almost as much as he was there. That Seferin didn't go to the final when you have two UEFA countries in the final is unacceptable. I know it's far, but Prince William should have gone. Rishi Sunak should have gone. I don't even understand that nobody representing England at that kind of level was there. Wait, Prince William, the honorary head of the English yeah, FA? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he had better things to do. So he says on a Sunday, but that was unacceptable again. But apart from that, I think every everything else and every every component of this World Cup and the legacy of it is there to make it good. Certainly now with the Olympics being just next year, where yeah. you will see those teams again. You most have that of them, same momentum. Yeah. yeah, the momentum can last for a season. And then you go again in Paris, the time will suit... <laughs> The you know the um, the US as much as Australia pretty much let's say, so it should be good and, but and make the most of it and stop using money as the benchmark or the men's game as yeah, the benchmark. This the is menu. something different. Yeah. It can follow its own path. It's, yeah. it's already from day one much more global yeah. than the men's game was yeah. when it started out in eighteen seventy odd whatever. So and we know. have a Nations League coming up as well Absolutely. to qualify for the Olympics, which would be very interesting. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.